y a si longtemps déjà J'ai oublié comment Tant de mots, de moments Pensés depuis longtemps Hello and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I'm also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I am coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my partner, our two daughters and our five cats. And this is a primarily a knitting video. However, sometimes I talk about some of the other crafts I'm getting into, such as cross stitch and crochet. Um, so a big warm welcome to all new viewers and a big welcome back to all returning viewers. Um, yeah, it's been about three weeks since my last podcast and um, I hope everyone's doing well. We, we are back in lockdown, essentially, um, in our province. We are um, under a stay at home order, so we're supposed to be staying at home not allowed to associate with anybody outside of our households, all those kinds of fun things. Um, so yeah, anyways, <laughs> I'm also filming in a new location today. Um, it's, it's quite lovely outside, so I figured I'd take this opportunity to try filming in my backyard. Uh, so there may be a bit of background noise and hopefully it's not too distracting. There's also a lot of sun in my eyes, so <laughs> sorry for the squinting. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's just jump right into the knitting chat. Um, actually, before we do that, I should mention that we do have a make-along that is, uh, the first trimester is winding down um, in the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast group on Ravelry. Um, so it's the Around the World Mal 2021. And um, essentially for this trimester, we were knitting with yarns or from design uh, patterns from designers that are from our own country. And um, we've had quite a few beautiful entries. Um, sorry. <laughs> There's gonna be noise. I do apologize. Hopefully you guys can't hear that as loudly as I do. Um, but yeah, so there's been love, a lot of lovely makes. Um, I'll pop in a quick video at the end or a slideshow of some of the most recent finished objects. Um, but this, this one does close, this trimester closes um, at the end of April. So there's a few days left to get your, get your entries in. And to be eligible, you do have to put a finished object photo in the finished object thread. Um, yeah, and then the next trimester, so this is a year long knit along. Um, you can pop in and out whenever you want, but the next trimester will begin starting May 1st and uh, run for four months. And um, this time we're knitting with yarns or from patterns of designers from the Eastern Hemisphere. And um, yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on because um, I think I've made a decision on what I'm gonna be making. So without further ado, let's move into the actual knitting chat. So I'll start with what I'm wearing. Um, yeah, I finished my soiree by, uh, it's a pattern by Emily Foden, a Canadian knitwear designer and um, hand dyer. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So again, full disclosure, I have not washed or blocked it yet. I've been waiting for warmer weather to, uh, to be able to wash it and then dry it outside. Um, we just don't have a lot of space in our house. So um, today is finally the most beautiful day. And of course I'm wearing a, a wool sweater right now. <laughs> So a little warm, um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, maybe I'll stand up. I don't, I don't know if you can see, but it's got this lovely cable and honeycomb up the sides, all the way up the under the arms. And my favorite detail is the cable around the shoulder here. I think it's so, it's so elegant and cute. So yeah, it's a cropped um, boxy sweater. Mine didn't turn out quite as boxy as, as I think it was intended to. It's a bit smaller. Um, and I did, the only modification that I made was I added in three extra cable repeats um, to the, to basically lengthen the body to make it less cropped. It's still s slightly cropped. I don't know if you guys can see how short it is, but yeah, I'm wearing it over top of a, a linen dress right now, which is perfect. Um, but yeah, so it's got the rolled, him um, a rolled collar so you do 
So let me explain the construction. You start at the bottom, it's knit bottom up. Um, so you knit in the round until you get to the armpits and then you separate for the front and back panels. Then you do a, um, I can't remember what the bind off is. I think it might've been a kitchen, kitchener stitch. You kitchener stitch the two, the front and the back together along the shoulders. Um, and then you pick up around here and start the sleeves and knit down. And yeah, the only thing, like I said, I, I lengthened the body a bit and I did alter my sleeve decreases because they, uh, the pattern has you decrease quite um, rapidly at the beginning. And um, I found that that was after completing one arm, I found it was too snug. So I went back and I decreased every I think it was every six rounds instead of every four rounds and that that was perfect and again i haven't washed and blocked it yet but i do think it'll it should stretch a little bit so the sleeves feel, feel a little short but i think they'll be okay after so yeah i'm really happy with it um i knitted up out of lichen and lace yarn so i held together two of their yarns uh sock yarn which is a i believe it's an 80 20 so 80 percent merino 20 percent nylon held together with their marsh mohair, which is a mohair silk. I think it's like a 75-25% blend or something. Um, and the colorway is sea glass. No, beach glass, which is very, very true to form. It's beautiful. I love it. Love it. But I am quite warm. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's like the hottest day we've had all in the last two weeks or so. Okay. So that is my um, first finished object. My second finished object, I do not actually have with me because it was a gift knit and I've already gifted it. I'll pop in a picture of what it is, but essentially I knit a, or crocheted a, um, I think it's called a rainbow ripple baby blanket um, for our lovely neighbors who are expecting any day now. Um, yeah, and they, uh, they, don't know the sex of the baby. So um, I tried to do something that was a little bit more um, gender neutral. And so I used um, two yarns from my stash, deep stash here. He's like, we're going back way, <laughs> way back. Um, so these are two loops and threads, sugar spun yarns that I've had. They don't even make this yarn anymore. And I use the colors, um, I think they're sky, is this like tur very pale turquoisey color and then this brownie beige is called teddy colorway and um yeah i just alternated the two um i think i did five five rounds of each color and then and then started um alternating and then yeah and i will say that i am not a master crocheter by any means i'm fairly new to the world of crochet and this was my first baby blanket that i've ever made it took me I think it took me about a week and that was with restarting so I made a mistake and had to go back and restart but yeah super quick like I I can't even imagine trying to knit a blanket in that amount of time so yeah it was uh it was quite quick I used a USG um hook I don't I don't know what that is in millimeters I'm sorry I don't even know what I don't I'm not overly familiar with the crochet world and and the different hook sizes and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it was a G <laughs> and yeah, it went super fast. So yeah, we've already gifted that and hopefully the baby will get lots of use out of it. It was nice and cozy and soft. I forgot to mention it is a mostly acrylic blend. Um, there's a little bit of wool in there. I think it's 2% or something like that. Um, but for baby knits, I thought it was a good option so that you know the, the parents to be can just throw it in the wash and um, don't have to worry about, you know, taking care of it essentially um yeah so that's my second finished object and i think that's my final up actually i don't have any others um but i do have i'll talk about this one so this is housed firstly it's housed in my lovely bag that my mom brought me back from ecuador and I mentioned this last time I had picked this up. This was a hibernating summer knit that 
had some issues with the yarn tangles. And I also forgot to mention that I wanted to say thank you to um, a few people who reached out and, and gave me some suggestions on future, um, future ways to wash your washable yarns and not get them tangled. So um, the two suggestions that I recall um, that I wanted to pass along, just in case you're in the same boat, um, were using either like a, uh, one of those laundry bags that you use for your, like, for your bras, um, lingerie bags. Um, using those or even if you don't have any of those around um, but you have some nylons um, yeah using the the leg of the nylon and just tying it at the top um, or cutting it and tying both ends or whatever um, those work too so thank you very much to the two people who uh, gave me those great ideas for future reference so this is the um, threadbare top it's a pattern by two of wands I purchased a kit from We Are Knitters last year to make this top. So it came with the pattern and it actually comes with the needles. It comes with a tapestry needle and um, what else does it come with? Oh, obviously the yarn. So it's kind of like a all in one. I am using my own needles though, because I, <laughs> I just, they give you the, the straight um, wooden needles and I prefer to use my, um, my interchangeable chiaogu. So yeah, it's knit up in two panels. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure I'm showing you the right side and I'm not. Okay. So the two panels are identical. There's a front and a back. And upside down. There we go. So yeah, you just knit two of these. Super simple. Um, there's ribbing at the top and then some stockinette. There's garter stitch and drop stitches. And so it's super simple. So I've finished both panels now. First one and anyways, you get the gist of it. They're the exact same. I'm not gonna fiddle around trying to find it, but two of these. And now I just need to um, seam up the sides. So join them and then you actually pick up um, for the sleeves and just do a few rounds of ribbing and then I'm done. So then then I have another summer top. I'm very excited about it. Um, so this is being knit out of We Are Knitters Pima Cotton. I'm holding it two strands double. So this is what it looks like in the ball. Unfortunately, I don't have the labels anymore. It's 100% cotton. Um, it's very soft. It's not like um, I've used other cottons that I've purchased um, from like Michaels for dishcloths and stuff like that. It's not like that at all. This is a very soft cotton. It is heavy. Um, this shirt's gonna be very heavy. <laughs> I can already tell. Um, but yeah, it's, it's lovely um, to the touch and the colorway is called sand. So yeah, almost done that. Should have that done by next time. And which is good timing because I wanna be able to wear it. I really do need a few more summer tops. I only have th three now. I haven't worn my ranunculus yet. Um, I knit a summer ranunculus last year out of Illimani cotton alpaca lace. Actually, I think it's a light fingering, but it seemed more like a lace weight is really, really fine. And um, yeah, it's gonna go over top of this dress that I'm wearing. It's gonna look cute, but I still have to wash and block it and weave in, weave in ends. Terrible terrible if I could honestly if I could pay someone to weave in ends for me <laughs> I'd, be too, I'd be doing that <laughs> okay <laughs> so moving on um yeah my socks I was working on a pair of socks that are being knit out of this gorgeous 52 weeks of socks book Um, the pattern I chose to start with is called Candle Flame. And it's these lovely, um, slightly cabled, kind of like a half cable, um, half honeycomb cable actually, pattern. And the designer is Mona Schmidt. And it's housed in this adorable little Bee bag by My Needle, My Needle Crafts, I believe. 
This one doesn't have a tag. Oh yeah, it does. My Needle Crafts, yes. Okay, and just so everyone knows, I just wanna make it clear I'm not sponsored by anybody. This is just, I just recommend things that I actually truly like. So yeah, just full disclosure there. Um, yeah, so I've made a bit of progress on them. I'm knitting them two at a time. And this bag, I've mentioned it before, but for those of you who are new, this bag is made for two at a time knitting. Two, whoop, two at a time sock knitting. So it's got a panel in, in the middle to separate the two uh, skeins of yarn. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's super handy. So I'm knitting them two at a time. I mentioned previously, I do start them on separate needles and then place them on the same needle together afterwards. So this is what I have. So I finished the ribbing and now I'm, I'm working on the actual pattern. And hopefully you guys can see this. I can't, there's so much sun, I can't tell what you guys can and cannot see. So maybe I'll come a little bit closer just to make sure you can see this lovely pattern. So I am using Sweet Skein of Mine yarn. Um, it's in her, this is the label. It's in her uh, BFL High Twist, which is an 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon. It's a two ply yarn and you get 400 yards per 100 grams. And the colorway for this one is called Blush. It's this gorgeous, really pale peachy, peachy color that I just adore. So yeah, those are my socks. Okay, and then, um, yeah, I have one more work in progress to share with you guys. I'm just double checking here. And that is my Talia sweater, which is a pattern by Jennifer Steingass. I didn't do a whole heck of a lot on it, I'll be honest, um, but I did want to pull it out because, well, I'll, firstly, I'll show you, and then for whoever, you know, if you're a new viewer, you haven't seen it before, at least you get a chance to see it. Um, so as I mentioned last time, and I'll just show you again, but I finished the sleeves. So you start with the sleeves for this pattern. I knit them two at a time. My new favorite way, it's just so handy. So these are the sleeves. And there's like lovely color work at the bottom. It's got a little rolled cuff. Um, yeah, so sleeves are done. And then I moved on to the body. Like I mentioned, I haven't done a ton and it's rolling considerably on me. So it's so hard to show, but I'll do my best. Oh, so this is what I've done. It's got this exact same color work at the bottom of the body as it does on the sleeves. And I'm now at the part where I'm starting to do the waist shaping. Um, yeah, so it's it's a fun knit. I, I, I love Let Lopi. I'm in love with the Let Lopi. I have to be honest. So I'm using four different colors of Ice Tex Let Lopi. Um, We've got the green at the bottom, which is called uh, celery heather. We've got this rust, which is called rust heather. Um, so I'll just wait till the car pauses. So loud. Um, <laughs> and then there's this yellowy color in the middle of the color work. That's um, it's called golden heather. And then the main um, main color is called straw heather, I believe. And I'm really enjoying it. And I had mentioned that. I thought I was going to be short on the rust heather. So I just wanted to extend a big thank you to two viewers um, who, one who reached out to me and offered to send me the rest of her skein. And that was Selma of the Little Big Knits podcast, which if you haven't seen it, it's, it's an awesome podcast. I watch it religiously. Um, yeah, Selma's, Selma's always making something gorgeous. So you should check it out. Um, but yeah, um, when we <laughs> when we finally compared the label numbers, uh, unfortunately, the color that she had was not the same. Although they looked similar, it didn't have the same um, color code on it. So I didn't want to didn't want to take a chance and just take it for nothing. So um, 
I was lucky enough to have another viewer, Judith, who let me know that there is a local Ontario um, local yarn shop that had some of the rust heather still in stock. So she kindly directed me there and I was able to pick up two, two skeins. And it arrived in like record timing. I think I placed the order, I placed the order and it arrived within two days or something like that. It was so fast. So that's awesome. And um, so the dye lots are going to be different. I should say that <laughs> for those who don't know, the, the color work portion, the yarns for the color work portion are leftovers from a sweater that my mom started. Um, we figured it was 30 years ago. So in the 90s, is that right? Yeah. Anyways, it was 30 something years ago. And so she gave me all her leftovers. So <laughs> in the course of 30 years, dye lots have changed. <laughs> understandably. So the colors are not, they're not exactly the same. I'm just going to get closer here so you can see, hopefully. Um, but I think because it, this part's going to be up on the yoke, it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be overly noticeable. And um, I picked up two skeins just to be sure I didn't run out because, yeah, <laughs> better safe than sorry. So yeah, um, I'm excited to to get going on this now that I've done the soiree. So, oh, and I should mention also that that it, this project I've moved it into a bigger bag because it was just getting too large for the other bag I had it in. And this is um, a beautiful hand uh, naturally hand dyed drawstring bag by um, a local Ontario natural hand dyer. Um, natural you and it's a reversible bag so I've actually turned it inside out it was on the inside it's um, pink and yellow and I've switched it to the brown so yeah those are all of my works in progress I'm just gonna take a sip here um, so now that I'm done the soiree, which was again knit up as part of our make along, um, I am thinking about what I will be making for the next trimester. And I think I've decided on making the ranunculus. So the ranunculus is a pattern by Midori. I've heard people say hi Rose, Hirose. I wanna say Hirose cause she's Japanese, um, but she lives in Germany. And um, it's a beautiful pattern. It's so, versatile um, you can make it all different sizes and weights and and with different um, sleeve lengths and even um, necklines it's 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 amazing how versatile like you could see one version of it and another side by side and not even realize it's the exact same sweater pattern it's an amazing pattern and i highly recommend it so my goal is to knit one for every season so i've already done a summer and i'm planning on my spring one and I showed these last time, but I did order these two yarns from Small Bird Workshop. I'm trying to remember where they are located. I think they are out in BC. Um, so yeah, this is a beautiful cotton linen nettle silk um, combination yarn. I'm going to come closer so you can see because it's got like variation in it. I think that's where I've been told um, the white is where the silk is because the silk doesn't take up the dye as readily as the wool does. So yeah, it's really pretty. And then I'm going to pair it with this beautiful um, silk mohair blend that has like a dark, it's almost a ready pink in it. So yeah, I think I'm going to hold those two double and make a spring ranunculus. And that's going to be my contribution to the to the make along. Um, so I'm going to get these wound sooner than later and start a test swatch just to see, make sure that I like the fabric and to de determine which size of needles I'm going to use. Um, so yeah, so um, 
Yeah, for those who are interested in joining the next trimester of the Make Along, um, like I mentioned, it's uh, we do have a Ravelry group, and there is a thread where you can chat about any of your your details and show off your works in progress, and um, you know, just join in the conversation. So you're more than welcome to join in. Um, I also did mention last time that the the winner of this trimester is going to receive two skeins of this lovely yarn, same color. Um, I bought two extras when I ordered it, so. You're going to get two of these and um, I also recently purchased these adorable little stitch markers and I can't remember the name of this shop but I'll put a link down below to it. It was on Etsy. I ordered myself a needle, uh, no not a needle gauge, a swatch gauge and look how cute. They have little, they're all different, they have little leaves and ferns and things on them. So I'm going to throw these in as well with the uh, with that beautiful yarn for the prize. So that's going to be drawn. I will draw that on, I suppose, May 1st. And I guess I'll announce it um, on the next podcast episode and in the Ravelry group, of course. So that's that. And then in terms of acquisitions, um, I received or I purchased a... Um, copy of Lina magazine. This is um, issue, oh my goodness, I can't remember. Number 10. I didn't have this one yet. I have all the others. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of beautiful makes in this one. Um, I, I kind of just flipped through it quickly, so I haven't really gone into detail into it, but yeah, I'll definitely need to take the time and read it. It's a, it's a beautiful magazine for those who haven't maybe haven't seen it before um the photography is just stunning and of course it <laughs> a robin of course it has beautiful uh, beautiful pictures and beautiful patterns in it as well and there's always like an interview with the designer or sometimes there's interviews with uh shep shepherds or shepherdesses or different farms like it's there's recipes <laughs> it's amazing i love these magazines and then i also ordered and I should say this was pretty much 100% influenced by seeing some gorgeous um, video, or no, was it video? No, I think it was pictures on Instagram by B, B, B Mandarin, um, Melody Hoffman. So she's knitting this gorgeous new pattern that's kind of reminiscent to me of the ranunculus. It's got like this beautiful kind of lace texture at the top. Um, and she was using this white Pluto Lope held double. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> so I ordered myself a sweater's quantity. A Pluto Lope. Pluto Lope, sorry, say it wrong. Um, yeah, and this will be my first time using it. I've never knit with it before. I've heard about it. So it's an unspun Icelandic wool that uh, does break pretty easily. So you have to be very delicate with it. I'm a loose knitter, so I'm hoping that um, plays in my favor. And um, yeah, so I don't know if I'll be holding it double stranded or or what I'll be doing. I mean, Melody hasn't even um, released that pattern yet. Anyways, I don't think she's just been working on it, but I was very inspired by the way it looked. So also inspired by um, Anastasia of the Free Your Sheep, Free Your Sheep podcast. She made um, a lovely sweater. I think it was a sweater sweater or cardigan I think it was a sweater recently with Plot uh, Lopi <laughs> and she held that together with a strand of mohair and it looked beautiful so there's options for sure especially with white I don't know if white sweaters might I don't know what I was thinking I'm full disclosure a very messy person when I eat I don't know if white was the way to go <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I now have a sweater quantity of that. So I think in terms of the knitting content um, and the making content, um, that is it. Oh, woodpecker. Um, <laughs> I wonder if you guys can hear that. He, sounds he or she sounds pretty close to us. So um, in terms of life stuff, like I mentioned, we're in a stay at home order um, we're still able to go out for exercise and things like that. So um, I was actually off last week for spring break. The kids were out of school. Oh. 
So um, my whole goal was to get my daughter riding a bike without training wheels, like riding a bike. It's been a struggle. <laughs> she's 11 and um, she's been riding a bike since she was, oh goodness. Well, she had a tricycle even when she was three. So let's say she's progressed, but um, she was not confident without her training wheels on. So um, last year we took them off and she had a bit of a spill and was like, I'm never riding again. And this year I was like, I see all these children in the neighborhood and I want her to be able to ride her bike around. And like, they can't really play together right now because we're in lockdown, but she needs to be able to ride a bike without training wheels. So, um, yeah, got her on the bike, took her to, so I think the problem here was I was trying to teach her in front of our house on a sidewalk that is slightly sloped, not sloped a large amount, but enough that either you're trying to pedal uphill. Um, and of course, if you're learning how to bike, that's very difficult because you can't get your feet on the pedals and, or you're going downhill and you feel like you're going to lose control. So that was the biggest issue. So what we did was we walked all the way to the end of the end of the road and there's a park and a big parking lot and sure enough we got there and she just started riding <laughs> I'm like what all this time all this time and look at her go now all of a sudden it was awesome and the look of pride on her face was just oh it was a proud moment let's say so yeah she's she's all good we got her um she's riding a bigger bike now even so good to go um but <sighs> We also, okay, totally influenced. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm being heavily influenced by people lately, but totally influenced recent, most recently by Kat of the Heather and Hops podcast. So she just started uh, roller skating lately and she's been documenting her progress from day one um, on a Instagram account that she calls, I think it's knit and roll. And um, yeah, see, <laughs> so day one, I see her in her house and she's just trying it out or whatever and she looks amazing like she's like looks like she's been born to do this and that she's been doing it for years and she's she did speak about um she did take figure skating for three years and that you know it's been a long time since she's figure skated but that it it really helped and i thought well i can skate <laughs> i ice skate every year my daughter took figure skating lessons and i'm like we can do this <laughs> So I promptly went on and ordered myself first a pair of roller skates and all the protective gear to go with it. And then um, after showing my daughter uh, Kat's videos as well, <laughs> she, um, she wanted her own pair too. So. so I've ordered her pair and they've all come in. So I think today is the perfect day. It's sunny. We have all the protective gear. We're gonna walk down to the end of the uh, of the road again to the park and put on our skates and give it a go, and hopefully not injure ourselves too much. I'm more worried about myself, honestly. Really, <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be, and there's a little bit of fear I think that comes with age and trying new things that can hurt you. I'll try any new like craft, not a problem. <laughs> but sports, ooh. So for those who are interested, I ordered um, Rio Roller Scripts. They are, um, I think they're toted as being more of a beginner skate. So I don't, I don't really know what the difference is. I haven't done my research. I just went, beginner skates? Okay, sounds good. <laughs> um, and they're at kind of the lower end of the, the price range. Of, well, they can get expensive. I didn't realize how expensive roller skates can be um yeah and they're made for indoor and outdoor that, that was important to me mostly outdoor because i don't really have the space in my house to do indoor skating but it's good that they're versatile and so yeah um we'll see how that goes what else is happening so um today i hopefully after i finish filming this podcast if i finish in time I will be joining a zoom meeting to learn about um introductory birding <laughs> so learning how to identify birds um yeah this is something that's being put on by it's kind of a collaboration by um some local ontario um stewardship groups and um in partnership with um some of our governments um local governments as well so 
Yeah, it should be interesting. Um, there's a session on getting kids interested in birding as well, which trying to work on my on my daughter and get her more into uh, into the the nature side of things. But it just yeah, it's it's so funny, right? Like you can raise them, you can raise your children with all of the things that you love to do and you enjoy and stuff like that. And, and there's no guarantee that your children are gonna like those things too. So that's okay, we all have our different interests. She's more into um, art and anime, anime is her big thing. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to taking that. And like I said, we'll go roller skating in the afternoon. And um, oh, I ordered some plants for my garden. Um, so last year, my partner built me a gorgeous arbor swing. Um, and I needed to, to figure out what plants I want because it's got like a trellis on the sides. I want something climbing up it and, and all those things. So I think I've, I've landed on some clematis that I want to plant um, to climb up the arbor and over. Um, but clematis require, I think their roots require shade, so I need something to plant at the bottom to kind of give them that shade. And so I've decided on some honeysuckle bushes. Um, so I went to um, a site, again, I'll link everything down below, but it, it was a, um, I think it's Ontario native plants or something like that. And so they're all plants that are native to our, to our region, uh, to our province. Um, which is very important to me. I obviously don't want to plant any invasive species for sure, but I also try to um, focus on more naturally occurring species. So honeysuckle bush is one. Um, what else did I get? I got some plants for my front garden. Um, I got some uh, bee balm and I have, um, uh, I forget the name of it. It's just a regular, the regular bee balm, I guess it's like a red and oh my goodness, the hummingbirds love it. Uh, bees love it too, obviously, hence the name, but the hummingbirds, I was shocked, I guess, cause it's red. So I got some pink striped or sp pink spotted. I can't remember the name now, but it's another form of bee balm. That's a um, different color. And I got, um, some more milkweed for the for monarch butterflies so we do get quite a few monarch butterflies ever since i planted milkweed in the front yard um, so we've really enjoyed watching them kind of work through the different phases um, yeah it's pretty cool i get i'm not gonna lie i get pretty attached to the little caterpillars i hate seeing them disappear because i'm like especially when they're little because you know they haven't made their 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 pupas yet or their cocoons yet and you know something's happened to them so yeah i get attached <laughs> so i planted more i want to plant more milkweed so i've got a bunch of milkweed coming and um so those are all the flowers and then i think i ordered um some wild strawberries yeah wild strawberries and a red raspberry bush sorry there's some flock of pigeons moving in you can probably hear them cooing <laughs> Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm gonna start a berry bush section in the corner um, over that way in our backyard. And those are gonna be delivered as plants, which I'm super excited about. I hopefully, I've never done this before, but I'm assuming they're gonna be safe upon arrival. Um, yeah, so they're gonna arrive, I think at end of May or early June, and then there'll be lots of gardening to be done. So. I guess that is it. I will leave it, uh, leave it there. And I just want to wish you all a wonderful three weeks and I will see you and talk to you soon. Bye. Il y a si longtemps déjà J'ai oublié comment